Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we're going to show you how to set up the oscillator on the Behringer Wing. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. Real quick before we get into today's video, I just wanted to shout out Natalie Runyon's new book, Raised to Stay. Um, it deals with church hurt, burnout, wanting to quit, things that are all very common issues with church production volunteers. Uh, I know I've dealt with this. I know a lot of people I've worked with have dealt with this. Um, so this is a really, really good book for you to check out for you or your team. Uh, make sure that you are in this for the long haul. Don't Quit on Us, Race to Stay by Natalie Runyon would be a great book for you to check out. It is going to be available uh, on July 4th, but we are in pre-order times right now. So please check out the links in the description. Grab a copy. It'll help you. It'll help Natalie. All good things. Raise to Stay by Natalie Runyon. Go check it out. All right, guys. So today we are talking about using an oscillator with the Behringer Wing. First off, what is an oscillator? An oscillator is a very simple tool. It creates either a sine wave, pink noise, or white noise. And you can use that consistent tone or noise uh, to send a signal to your different speaker groups and outputs to make sure that everything is routed properly. This is especially important if you are a mobile church or band, uh, Ascension Collective, for example. We set up and tear down for every event that we do. Uh, we usually have different you know, uh, systems for our speakers and our in-ears. So this is a tone that I can send to those speakers and make sure that when I send a signal to the main left speaker, am I hearing it from the main left speaker or am I hearing it from the right sub? Uh, and so you can really find your troubleshooting issues a lot faster by doing this so that when your band arrives, you're going to know that your speakers and your in-ears and your monitors are all set up properly. And you're not going to have to fumble around with that when the band is on stage. Now, with pretty much every digital mixer, um, the oscillator is set up in the menu system somewhere and it's always ready to go. The Behringer Wing, however, does a weird thing where they treat the oscillator as a signal source like you would a kick drum or a vocal mic, meaning that you need to assign it to a channel to actually be able to utilize it. And that's kind of a strange thing, which is why we're doing the video today. Uh, so let's hop right in. I'm going to show you how I like to set up my oscillator. All right, so we are looking at the Wing Edit app today. Uh, I have an actual Wing hooked up. This is just a little bit easier for me to demonstrate with. Just so you can see what I'm dealing with here, I have a user page, and I have all the channels in one spot that we need to talk about. So don't be you know weirded out that it doesn't look like this on your board. Um, I'll talk about what channels are what and where to find them as we go. Um, so when you set up an oscillator, like I said, on most of the consoles, they are built into a menu system. On here, we need to give it a channel to work from. Um, if you can't burn a channel, uh, there are ways that you can substitute this temporarily on existing channels. I'll get to that at the end of the video. But I usually like to set my oscillator up on auxiliary four, which I have selected right here. So with aux four selected, you can click on the home button, and then we're going to go to this second tab here, which is our input page, and we're going to go to the main input, source group, we're going to select oscillator, and then oscillator one. And now it's going to sound like this. Very fun, a 1K tone that is basically useless. So <laughs> you'll notice on our page here, we have all the processing power like you would have for any kind of, uh, you know, kick drum, vocal mic, whatever. Um, but the actual settings for the oscillator are not showing up on this channel page. To get to that, next to your screen, you're going to go to routing. Up here, you got these three buttons. The middle one is your uh, inputs, your sources. And from our source group, again, oscillator, oscillator one. And here you can find the different settings. So turn this up a little bit here. Very simply level. I just like to set mine to negative 18 because negative six is just a bit hot for my taste. Uh, you've got your frequency for sine waves. So that's fun. Um, that can be very useful if you just need to test a subwoofer, for example. Um, so obviously we're listening to the sine wave. Here's pink noise, white noise, 
So we're going to leave it on pink and set the level to negative 18. To me, that's the most useful setting. Once you've done this, unless you need to switch to a sine wave for some reason, you'll basically never have to go to this page ever again. <laughs> so let's go back to our actual channel here. We're gonna hit home. Um, the oscillator is, because we're just on an aux channel, which is already routed to mix one. Uh, very simple, you can see on here, this is how my general system is set up. I have my main mix one right here. Main mix one then feeds into three matrices. We've got mains, subs, and fills. Um, so when I turn up the oscillator, I'm not gonna do it in this example because you're not in the room with me to hear these different speakers, but it will go to all these different groups. Um, what I would then do is mute all my matrices and then one by one, turn them on listen to the oscillator, make sure things are coming out of the right speakers, pan if you have stereo system. And so hopefully when you pan the oscillator to the left, you'll hear it coming out of, in this case, main left, pan to the right, hear main right. Then mute that, go to your subs. If your subs are in stereo, check your stereo, mute that, go to your fills, and just make sure that everything's working. It's very simple. When you're all done, make sure that everything is unmuted so you are ready to rock. Now, when it comes to testing your uh, in-ear mixes and live stream and all that kind of stuff, similar. Um, so we've got our oscillator selected. Let's go ahead and name it just for fun here. I'll make it red. Cool. All right, so we've got our oscillator selected. Um, We're gonna go to the very bottom tab, which is our sends tab and you can see a bunch of in-ear mixes that are set up on here. Now, generally, this will be ready to go right away, um, but one thing that I would suggest you do just to make sure that this functions right every time with every mix um, is select one of your mixes, in this case, drums. We're gonna click on this little pan symbol here, and the settings in here, I would suggest that you have your mode link set to individual, so no, no matter what, uh, kind of mix you're sending it to, pre-fade, post-fade, subgroup, um, it's going to listen to what your setting right here is, which should be set to tap point. Um, and on an auxiliary, that means it's gonna be pre-fade. So uh, that's gonna work well without you having to hear it in the house at the same time. You can send it to just the drum in-ears, for example. Um, again, these are the default settings, but send mute should be set to follow mute, and panning should be set to individual. So I would suggest you do that for all 16 mixes. And then when you wanna test something, and this is really easy when you're on the console or even better on the mixing station app. Um, but what we're gonna do on here is we're just gonna take our drum uh, mix, we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna fade it up. And in this case, we're gonna to go to that pan, make sure that our left is correct, make sure that our right is correct. Hopefully you heard that on your end there. And when we're all good, turn it off and make sure that when you're all done that you mute the oscillator. So if someone unknowingly puts the oscillator up in their in-ears not knowing what it is, um, that's not going to affect them um, because you've muted it on the actual channel. All right, so in this example, we have set up a oscillator channel that is only the oscillator. Um, I have enough channels to do that with my normal setup, but maybe you do not. Maybe you have a lot of things plugged in and you can't burn a channel just for an oscillator that you only use sometimes. I use it a lot, so that's why I have it on here. So another way to do this would be to take a channel, preferably a playback channel like your computer or auxiliary input for background music, and you can switch to an oscillator as needed. So in this case, I have this computer channel here, and I just have some background music playing. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the channel, home, we'll go to that second tab, which is our input page. Um, and you can see that our main channel input is auxiliary three and four on the back of the board, but we don't have anything in our alt. So we can go to our alt page and then select our oscillator. And now whenever main is selected, um, we can hear background music, but whenever alt is selected, we will have our oscillator ready to go in there.
Uh, I would also suggest having your input select on manual, so this only changes when you specifically tell it to. Um, and whenever you're done, don't forget to put it back on main. So again, you have background music ready to go. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful to someone out there. Definitely a useful tool to make sure that everything is working the way it should. Don't forget to check out Raise to Stay. Links are in the description. Pre-order now, going to be available on July 4th. Raise to Stay by Natalie Runyon. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.